Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I am Noura Al-Mu'alla, Director of Learning and Research. I am happy to present our March meeting papers, a series of essays selected from Sharjah Art Foundation's March meeting 2021 open call, inviting artists, writers, and thinkers to, to expand on curator Okwe Enwazor's influential thinking about the biennial as a platform to engage with history, politics, and society. Taken together, the series revealed the extent to which biennials, such as the Sharjah Biennial, now celebrating its 30th anniversary, have contributed to the realization of new narratives and experiences of modern and contemporary art. Our next presenter is Sadia Kamran, whose work examines the contemporary art of Pakistan within its socio-political as well as historical context, and traces the development of the same as a transforms from traditional to modern and contemporary practices. She is a professor and the coordinator of School of Art at the Institute of Art and Culture in Lahore. I would like to invite Sadia to present her paper. We will be taking questions from the audience in the last five minutes. Simultaneous translation to Arabic is available in the chat box on the right of the screen. Uh, thank you, Noura, for the kind introduction. And uh, I must admit that I'm quite excited. This is my first time at March meeting, and uh, I'm looking forward to much more meetings together in person at, or virtual, whatever. I would also like to appreciate and acknowledge Sharjah Art Foundation, um, Hurul Kasmi, Vasan, Noura, Sana, and the team uh, who have pulled up a great show so far. I think I shall be moving towards my talk and share the screen now. Okay. Um, so I guess you can all see the screen, right? The Binals in Pakistan inculcating a new civic sense of art through art. Towards the end of the 20th century, two popular political and religious dogmas, Islamization and Pakistani art had a great impact on art in Pakistan. The field has been considered a Trojan horse in the hands of the progressives to infiltrate the complexion of an Islamic state or a mere pastime of the elite who do not have to worry about the bread or butter on daily basis. Such ideas have turned art into a socially convoluted but politically relevant field in Pakistan. Moreover, the country's social stratification, whether economic, educational, or merely behavioral, has influenced the creation and reception of art here. More recently, in the wake of globalization, following the trend of the times, or simply in an effort to improve the softer image of the nation, Pakistan has gotten introduced to the fascinating characters of the Bainians. The main centers of art, Lahore, Karachi, followed by Islamabad, have hosted art exhibitions and festivals. This study, while identifying the gap between conception and reception of such events and public art projects within Pakistani society, highlights the directions to make such events more impactful, inculcating a much needed civic sense about art and through art. Thus putting both intrinsic as well as extrinsic values and roles of art to work. In doing so, it revisits the concepts of art, public art, and even civic in the local context. I briefly introduce the art history of the region and after defining uh, the concepts of art, public art, and civic, I will come to the present um, scenario and the binales. Background and status of art in Pakistan. Pakistan has an artistic legacy that has its roots in prehistoric times. This, this land has been a cultural hub of various intellectual streams and belief systems. Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism rose from this very land. It very graciously hosted the Greeks, the Muslims, and the Christians over the period of time. Later, the region's rich cultural landmarks, extravagant natural resources, and prospective business ventures attracted many Europeans. Ultimately, it became the British colony in 1857. British attitude towards indigenous art was demeaning. 
from the official British perspective, India had no living art and had nothing to teach its own subjects. After the partition of India in 1947, the scene did not change much for Pakistan. The country's successive leaders defined the destiny of art here. The fabricated history and misconstrued teachings of Islam resulted in propagating the popular notions that art making in general and realistic representation of human figure in particular was forbidden. Art was looked at on an objective level and the abstract, subjective and metaphysical approaches of Islamic art were totally ignored. This Islamization and its after effects in form of Talibanization negated the true philosophy of Islam, which as a religion is quite liberal and is based on the betterment of society one that celebrates humanity instead of dividing it on the basis of caste and color. Such ideas also concealed Islam's love of beauty and depleted aesthetics from its main ideals. In reality, these political instigations and prohibitions served as a blessing in disguise. They united the artists and energized the Pakistani art world, provoked the artists to raise their voices for justice and reason. As art and literature were under great scrutiny, the artists who reacted to such policies were called the allies of the leftists and liberals, and some were branded as anti-state. These policies resulted in instilling bias against art and widened the differences between the haves and have-nots, leaving art and literature as a business of the well-off. Globalization and Pakistani art. At the dawn of the 21st century, art in specific sections of Pakistani society was thriving. The politically motivated artists who had become empowered as an aftermath of direct or indirect socio-political expressions during the last quarter of the previous century paved way for both themselves and the following generation of artists to take up more intense issues. Identity, social stratification, gender and patriarchy, tolerance in for, and for religion, economy and critique on the political system are some of the popular subjects in the art of the time. It was also a time when notions such as the globalization of the art world got popularized. Globalization affected the production and consumption of art worldwide. It facilitated artists in reaching out loudly on the international horizon. The painters of Pakistan played their role in projecting the politics of a localized ideological conflict onto a screen of international proportions. All this and the fact that post 9-11 Pakistan became the center of world's attention, which was desperate to learn more about Pakistan and understand its people. Responding to this new order, Pakistani artists quickly established innovative parameters to meet the need of the one global system that claimed to be diminishing physical or ideological boundaries amongst countries and continents, or nations and races. As a matter of fact, the whole conceptual framework of the mere idea of globalization was coupled with the opposing features of localization. The only concrete change witnessed in such a scenario was a Lexus shift from Orient and Occident and East and West to one world or the global world or the global village. The inclination to view art through the lens of a Western paradigms was the climax of the first decade of the 21st century. Some blamed the colonial hangover and others credited the better organized cultural infrastructure in the West. The market driven globalized art was organized on the statutes that reconfirmed the Western hege hegemony. The galleries, Museums, collectors, historians, critics, and dealers, even the media were in their court. Innovations and experimentations in art, art history, and theory had to align with Western standards in order to be recognized, driving the non-Westerners to seek patrons and partners from the Western world to be successful. Such a trend left no options for Pakistani artists, but to either pursue education abroad establish contacts overseas, or learn to utilize their traditional skills, knowledge, or indigenous identities to captivate their foreign audience. 
these artists employed both the tricks and succeeded in earning a big name in the art world for themselves as well as for their country. Without uh, discussing in detail, I'll show you some of the examples that are the product of such a scenario. At the local level, wave of conceptual contemporary art in response to globalization was not welcomed by all. To some, such art essentially caters to political and economic instincts and leaves the traditional aesthetic concerns in art making as secondary or tertiary objectives, if not totally absent. Moreover, the idea of contemporary appeals mostly to those who have access to the global art scene. However, there is now a reasonably big lot of practicing artists who still believe in traditional ways of thinking and practicing art. The use of technology in another feature of discrimination between these groups. Artists who were already disenfranchised from society for being anti-Islam or anti-state have been further divided into groups on the basis of their preferences of subject, medium, and acceptance of contemporary sensibilities of art. And here are some of the examples of um, the conventional art practices, which are very much alive in Pakistani contemporary art. Art, beauty, and virtue in Pakistan. Art on its fundamental encounter disposes an aesthetic experience. Such an aesthetic experience transfers a person into an aesthetic state where morality follows. In its larger scope, art fosters harmony, rhythm, and balance. The equilibrium that it entails directs towards justice. The integrity, regularity, and stability are amongst the most sought after entities in contemporary social life. Together in close association, they also define beauty. The aestheticians determine a link between beauty, goodness, and virtue, as much as in Islamic thought, it links up to the God Almighty himself as he is beautiful and likes beauty. In Pakistani context, art can be located in its aesthetic experiences. It implies that here art is valued instrumentally and is cherished in terms of the benefit that it provides to two types of individuals, the creators and the laymen or the community at large. To popularize art as a mainstream social activity, it is important to make it more useful for this later and larger lot. Now, art has many extrinsic functions to perform in social life. To some, it possesses a cognitive value. To others, art has a way of word making. Both scenarios are useful in the prevailing situation. Together, the intrinsic and extrinsic values of art conform to the ideals of art in Pakistan. The inherent value of art, namely beauty and goodness, is the key feature that can be employed to sensitize the Pakistani community regarding art making and its socio-political and economic paraphernalia. The cognitive value enhances the intellectual and rational experiences, thus broadening the thinking patterns that must ultimately inculcate the much needed civic sense. A sense of belonging, a sense of ownership, a sense of responsibility towards each other or towards one's community and the state. Such awareness, though not an alternative to schooling, can supplement the process of informing, coaching, and training the masses in Pakistan, those who are otherwise deprived of formal education. Biennials and public art in Pakistan. Biennials and art fairs are the latest trends in Pakistan. It is an effort on the part of the people to explore and define their culture and to own their cities. But the question is, who is the public here? And what is the significance of such events in this context? It is clear that art is not an essential entity in the lives of common people. At least they are not consciously aware of its presence or impact on their lives. From this perspective, we develop an understanding that such international art exhibitions and biennials usually defy inherent aesthetic values of art in favor of more political and social engagement that serves to widen the gap between the enlightened producer or consumer of art and the layman spectator. 
In reality, it is rightfully claimed that despite their persistent denunciation of the ideology of art and its bourgeois implications, contemporary biennials re realize an environment that is equally privileged, exclusive, and highbrow. Kudus Mirza, an art critic and educator, observed that artists enjoy great fame and prestige as successful after marketing their works through galleries and dealers, but feel compelled to do public art works as part of their civic duty. Such a mindset illustrates a situation in which a privileged class group with an art background takes up the charge of educating or entertaining the general public, which has not been fortunate enough to enjoy the luxury of artistic or aesthetic experiences. As expected, the biennials and art festivals held in Lahore, Karachi, and Islamabad have received mixed reactions. On the face of it, such an approach in which a handful of people employ art as a tool to teach the larger community new ways of thinking that are radically different from the popular norms and belief systems appears unethical and must be resisted. Contrary to this, the reception of biennials and other public art projects has been quite encouraging, at least for the local communities. These events have been realized as a breath of fresh air in the otherwise stagnant, war trodden and terror struck society where freedom of expression and basic human rights have never been priorities. However, a portion of the artist community has felt that these events were not all inclusive and that, merely, that they merely replicated Western models or were heavily dependent on Western ideals of aesthetics laden with an agenda to propagate foreign cultural traditions. As the very idea of these international exhibitions was borrowed from the West, they remain Western, at least for now, in spirit and character. These concerns designate the artist community as an agent of change too. Many are members of civil society, while some have pronounced political affiliations. It is this social rank that justifies the authoritative tone of biennials, where the organizers as well as the practitioners seem to be setting up the parameters of contemporary appearance and the character of art for approval and adoption by all. The practitioners of traditional art with indigenous sensibilities feel left out. This division has already been noticed in contemporary art practice with its pronounced bent towards conceptual art as compared to the traditional mediums and genres. In other instances, the selected sites that have been cleared of encroachments, cleaned and actually made over for the installation of artworks enjoy historical and cultural significance. For example, the Wall City area in Lahore or Ferrari Hall in Karachi. This too has a twofold implication. Firstly, the importance of these sites is highlighted, which makes them come alive. Secondly, another kind of hierarchy is set up, one that enhances social stratification. Visitors from posh areas of the city interact with the less privileged. They remain aliens, fascinated by each other's existential realities. The security plans and protected traffic routes to facilitate the VIP biennial audience become troublesome for the local community. Thus, the artworks are not embedded in the local reality. Not only does the site become an exhibit, but so does the entire locality along with its inhabitants. In other regions, biennials are the key nodes in linking the production, circulation, and consumption of art. Contrary to this peculiarity, the biennials in Pakistan have distinct features. They aim to provide the forums to various agencies in order to initiate a discourse. This discourse is the cause as well as the effect of multiple political, social, economic, and historic underpinnings. The ripples they make in the social fabric speak to the success of, speak of the success of these events. In fact, the occurrence of the event itself is a big statement that questions and confronts the established norm of ridiculing art and artistic activities as inept in Pakistani society. The other and more peculiar questions of relevant historical references, traditional aesthetic practices, social discourse, local situations, materiality of visual culture, legitimacy of popular culture, 
or cultural coexistence require more emphasis. The two Lahore Biennials 2018 and 2020, which have served as the main case studies here, were neither activist incubators nor aesthetic containers. They were the result of efforts of the mobilization of artist communities to legitimize art as an important and useful agency that can be a vehicle of much sought after change in Pakistani society. Indeed, they have been the face of Naya Pakistan, of which each conscientious Pakistani dream of, but remains skeptical, skeptical about. I will um, quickly go through the images. These uh, projects have been discussed in detail uh, by Kutsia herself. So I think I shall move to the conclusion. The kinds of art fairs and biennials that are required for the vitality of heterogeneous civic cultures in Pakistan can never be established once and for all. However, ideological and bona fide art exhibition spaces have certainly changed. From the formal gallery or museum to the easily accessible public space or spot of historical or social significance. In addition, the status, function, and role of art in Pakistani society are also in transitional phase. In popular thought, art is all about beauty. Beauty comes from harmony. Art introduces harmony and harmonious relations within various elements of society. As it is about justice, peace, diversity, tolerance, awareness, expression, and communication. People experience these values, people who have been enabled to do so. And it is art itself that authorizes such a capacity and exerts impressions of virtue and morality. Thus, the civic sense can be inculcated by repeated reminders and sufficient dosages of such experiences on the individual as well as the collective level. Biennials bring ambitious and socially relevant projects that mobilize agencies within creative practices and the general public. For them, such an event must evolve from passive spectatorship into participatory, inclusive, and interactive activity in order to promote a civic sense, tolerance, respect, maturity, and sensibility required to live in a peaceful society. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sadia. Audience are welcome to send their questions. Okay, I have a question from the audience. Um, Lahore Biennial in many ways did use public and abandoned spaces to bring focus to local context in an attempt to blur, to blur lines between different socioeconomic class. How could these ideas be incorporated in the future? Well, I guess uh, the uh, basic and the main achievement of Lahore Biennial is to sensitize the Pakistani society with the ideas of art making. Now, at least they have started recognizing that it is uh, an institution and uh, an important field that uh, need to be or that can be pursued as a profession and uh, that can be used in a way to for the benefit of the larger society. I think that is the um, ultimate achievement of these two Benales that have been held in Lahore. So I guess the first steps have been taken in um, narrowing the gaps between um, the so-called elites and the general public, which has been, um, uh, yeah, I think since, um, the conception of Pakistan since the independence of Pakistan, there was a limited class of people who were practicing or understanding art or at least um, who were initiating a discourse and who were concerned with the concepts of art making. But now more and more people are at least enjoying it. They are considering it as something which is important and which can be a part of their daily lives. Um, as an educationist, I have been um, experiences, experiencing such incidents where the parents would come to us um, and um, discuss the idea that uh, 
if their children are pursuing this art and design as a career, uh, what do they have um, uh, in future? How, what kind of jobs would be available for them? How would they earn money? But I think these uh, binales and the art fairs that have been recently set up in Pakistan, uh, at least they are, they are giving these common people the idea that uh, art can be pursued as a career and as a profession. And uh, now less people come to us as teachers and uh, ask us questions about uh, being thrown in the hell for uh, creating uh, lifelike portraits and sculptures. So I guess um, this is how um, we can link the common people and uh, the art world together. Thank you. Another question, what kinds of trusted sources within Pakistan could undertake the kind of public education campaign about art that you've suggested? I think we have to start uh, not only for the art sake, but we have already realized that we need to revamp the entire education system in Pakistan, starting from the primary level, because we do introduce art uh, somewhere in the art colleges and uh, official uh, curriculums um, uh, in the government schools and the state sponsored schools do not pay attention to the um, um, the field of art and uh, only the private schools are offering art uh, in their O levels or A levels or IBA courses. Uh, so I guess um, we really need to, as academics, we need to figure out the ways in which we um, must um, invite the stakeholders, which are the common people and the state alike to think about uh, introducing art at an earlier level so that um, uh, the students, when they come to the undergrad programs or the graduation programs, uh, they have uh, a basic understanding of art making. So, you know, what happens in Pakistan is that when the student has no um, professional training or the no organized systematic training in art and they are just joining art colleges because they, um, you know, they wanted to be artists or they were inspired from some family member or an artist but they had not had any hand-on experiences with drawing or with any art history course, or even um, they have no experience of witnessing art in the museums and the art galleries. So I guess, yes, we really have to rethink the entire system and introduce art um, so that um, uh, it can be uh, utilized in the most um, uh, comprehensive way for the larger benefit of the society. Thank you. I don't know if that answers the question. Yes. Uh, one more last question. Have you seen any recent changes in the collecting and gallery scene within Pakistan? And how would you say the commercial side of the arts within Pakistan affect the art being created today? Well, yes, I think uh, the hegemony of uh, a couple of uh, galleries, which we could uh, count on fingers, has been uh, broken, I guess. Uh, over the past 10 uh, years, a decade or so, uh, there have been um, uh, many galleries have been set up in Lahore, Karachi and Islamabad. Even uh, I have come to know that uh, the smaller cities like Multan and Faisalabad um, have also started uh, setting up the galleries. So I guess the hegemony of one group that was associated mainly with the National College of Arts and uh, I'm also part of that, by the way. So I understand that um, uh, the hegemony that uh, Karachi and Lahore had over the art scene of Pakistan is no more there. And uh, more and more galleries, commercial galleries are being opened and run. Uh, that is why all sorts of art is being practiced and being bought. Uh, well, it is not an ideal scene yet, but I guess we have already set our directions towards um, the goal where uh, we will have uh, more uh, spaces uh, and more opportunities for all kinds of uh, artists, not only people who have been to the so-called two big uh, institutions of art like NCA, BNU or Indus Valley, um, but for um, the larger lot of the artists who are practicing. And this is a strange reality that uh, uh, Though we do say it again and again that art in Pakistan is the business of the elite, but uh, we all uh, experience um, students from um, the lower middle classes 
coming to the art colleges and performing very well. The only thing is that uh, they might not be that successful um, in terms of monetary values, but they keep on practicing art. And um, well, I guess that can be <laughs> another um, subject of um, research that um, how they just, uh, they have that passion and that energy that um, pushes them to um, practice art without realizing that it is not going to be um, the bread and butter provider for them. So I guess it is the hegemony is no more there, more and more calories are uh, coming up and um, it's a hopeful situation. Thank you very much, Sadia. Thank you.